and welcome to Domus Frasticus here in Craglawn. Um, this is a really cool, interesting little house that you can pick up. Um, it's quite small, the actual house itself, but it does come with some beautiful gardens, which I'll show you in a minute. So this guided tour is being given here by um, my vampire. This is kind of like his home away from home, uh, which will become very obvious when we go inside the house. But let's, I'll give you the guided tour of the outside first. So when you first pick up this house, as always with all the houses, yes, there's a garden area, but it's not very well planted, you know, so everything basically that you can see here um, is pretty much what I've put in. Uh, there is no fountain here in the floor ground in the forecourt as you come in, um, so I've decided to put this one here. Uh, this is an imperial fountain which kind of uh, fits with the uh, area that this house is in. Um, and as you can see I put some um, of these, I love these flowers because they actually uh, glow at night. So they act as a lighting feature as well. Uh, and they just give a little bit more detail to the fountain. So I put this fountain here in the uh, ground and you'll also see I've put a lot of um, flowers, uh, I've put some vines around because this particular property it's you can see the boundary of it is a lot of cliffs and it's a lot of grey um, so in order to break that up a little bit I put a lot of um, ivy hanging around the place so you'll see some of that as we go around um, but I've also placed quite a few statues in this house I think we have some beautiful statues in the game and I felt like this house was kind of crying out for some of them so again I wanted to make it look like they've been established here for a while so you've got some you know they look sort of overgrown sort of bedded into the environment rather than just sort of placed there and again some lighting features at the bottom what I think I will do uh, at the end of the video is I will show you what this house looks like at night because um, it is kind of pretty at night um, this particular statue I really like because I decided to do something a little bit different. You can see there at the base I planted um, sort of hedgerow around the base of it. Again to make it look like you know it had been well established for a while and a few more lighting uh, flowers as well I've put around it. It's kind of an interesting statue that I quite like it. Um, and I planted some more trees and stuff in the background and as you can see uh, I put some vines and stuff behind the statue so it does kind of break up that sort of grey stone that is behind it um, and again some flashes of colour here and there with some flowers and stuff um, on both sides and I put some trailing ivy as well over these rocks because like I said there was quite a lot of grain I wanted to bring you know, a splash of colour to the garden um, the front here if you look at the front of the house um, I put some hanging ivy um, down the front of the house again to give it a little bit more character and I've put some planters at either side um, as well to give it a little bit more sort of decoration and a little bit more colour. Um, and then if we come around the side here, I love these trees, these wisteria trees. Uh, they're so pretty. They come in different colours, but you know, purple is one of my favourite colours, so I had to have a purple one in my garden. Um, and then we've got this statue as well, which is kind of like the a warrior. A female warrior which I really like uh, and again it fit, fits with the aesthetic of the house and the location and again planted some more trees here so that it, it, it gave some verticality to the garden so that it was kind of like re they're like reaching over the pathway as opposed to it just being all open because I just think it makes it a bit more interesting um, I planted some rhododendron bushes and stuff down here as well and some kind of interesting void flowers and stuff like that again to make I didn't want it to look manicured I wanted to look almost like a wildflower meadow kind of thing so that's what kind of like the look that I was going for now if we come over here you can see that there's a wall and an archway here which isn't actually there when you buy the house uh, it's completely open but I wanted to close it in and as you can see I put a gate here uh, which does actually work you can open and close the gate which is kind of cool because I wanted to close off the rear part of the garden for this reason because I wanted to put kind of like a farmyard area back here uh, so I put this well in the middle because of course it makes sense if you're going to have animals out here that you would need to, you know, access to fresh water quite often. And you do get this little stable uh, building here um, which is kind of cool and I put some of these moon vines over the top of it which again they're a lighting feature at night but it also gives a little bit more character during the day. And then I put some of my really cool mounts in here, I really love these horses. Uh, the Shellback uh, war horse has got beautiful armour on it, I think it's a really beautiful horse. Um, I'm a sucker for black horses though, I love them. Um, and then I put some fencing around here um, so that I could have some animals. So if we look over, you can see there, there's my uh, wolf. 
and that's the remnants of whatever he had for his uh, re most recent meal there in the trough. And I've got my little chicken there that's sort of just, um, you know, wandering around. Um, I think chicken, yeah, chicken just laid an egg there. <laughs> Uh, and then over this side we've got some more fencing and I've got my sovereign sow so I've got a pig um, because of course you know you need your bacon um, <laughs> you got to rear your own bacon uh, and then I've got my bunny my powder white coney bunny and uh, they kind of roam around free around in this sort of area um, and I've got a couple of troughs um, and hay and straw and stuff like that for the horses so I, I mean I could have made this into kind of more of an ornamental garden but that's not really what I wanted to do I wanted to do something a little bit different out here um also did some more planting over here so I put some hedging and stuff uh hedgerows um again to make it look a little bit more overgrown uh, window box um because I think it just adds a bit more character and of course we've got somewhere here to chop our wood and then I built another wall over here, as you can see, another archway that leads back into uh, the front garden. Um, so, yeah, it, it is kind of pretty. Uh, I really like the outdoor space in this house. So if you're looking for a house that's got outdoor space, it's not too big for you to sort of have your first sort of go at, I recommend this house. So let's go inside and let's have a look and see what the actual interior has to offer. So this house is not that big. It's only got two rooms, essentially. So there's this room and obviously the room above, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, now because, like I said, this is my vampire's home away from home, the furnishings in here are all vampiric furnishings, um, which I love the uh, design of, as you can see some of the chair designs and stuff, the um, moulding and stuff on the chairs is really pretty. Um, you know, I, I appreciate things like that in real life, but I also appreciate it in games. I mean, look at the inlay on the table and things, it's, it's just that, that kind of detail, I think, it's just, it's just pretty. Um, bookshelves and we've got some meats here being cured they are questionable meats um, for reasons that will become obvious in a moment so we're not going to ask what meats they actually are it's probably best that we don't know um, we've got I love these far grave um, plants as well uh, that come in these display cases I think they're really unusual and interesting to look at um, um, so there's a few of those dotted around this house um, fireplace, we've got the um, deer there that's uh, been hunted and mounted on the wall. I'm not actually keen on those kinds of things in real life. Um, I think it's a bit sort of morbid and grotesque. Um, <laughs> each to their own. Uh, I don't really agree with like hunting wild animals for sport um, in real life, but uh, this is a game, so it kind of fitted with the aesthetic of the house. So I have put one up there on the wall. Um, over here we have got uh, a desk area and it's, instead of putting like a bookshelves or something above it I decided to put these levitating uh, tomes as you can see that are kind of hovering around because it kind of makes sense. My vampire is also a mage so it kind of makes sense that you know he would conjure his books into like a, a milestone like that rather than you know just have them on a traditional bookshelf and he can just grab them whenever he wants them. Uh, we also have these sort of, I like these because they remind me of, almost of church pews, you know, like really, really old church pews. Um, and again, you've got that inlay detail on them, which is really pretty. So I put some of those there. And we've got a bit of artwork and stuff on the on the, the floor. Now, as we come out here, um, we go upstairs. We'll see um, that I've done something a little bit unusual upstairs. So we'll have a look here. And again, I put this uh, gateway here to sort of close off this area. Um, because up here, this is kind of like his uh, workshop, like I said, home away from home. If you want to see his main house, uh, check out the Wizard's Tower, uh, which is another video that I put up a while ago, uh, if you do want a guided tour of his main home. Um, but this is kind of like his home away from home, and I put like this uh, warded sigil on the floor as well, because I feel like he would be interested in conjuring in the dark arts and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, we've got these uh, sigils on the ground. Uh, we've got some interesting artifacts in here. So we've got some torture devices, which you'll see uh, around the place. And he likes to collect mummies as well. So we have some mummified uh, characters here. So you've got this one of like grasping a sword. Uh, we've got a shrunken head there because, you know, why not? Um, some blood, some bloodied rags. Because, of course, we are vampires, so we do need to drink blood um, in order to sustain ourselves. So you will see bottles of blood around the place. Um, we have this torture rack over here, which of course you can see there, the last victim uh, that he put on there. Um, we've also got a torture rack there that he can extend down if he needs extra space. Um, and then we've got the Iron Maiden. You know, you can't really have um, 
a torture room like this without the classic Iron Maiden. Okay, so we've got that. He hasn't used this for a while. As you can see, it is covered in cobwebs. Um, but it's there if he ever really fancies it. Go on it, okay? Um, and then over here we've got, again, another victim who didn't kind of quite make the last... Um, torture thing that he did and you've got all of his weird like uh, horrific instruments there and everything obviously is covered in blood um and then over here we've got uh some alchemy i mean this room's really dark <laughs> it's really dark i just think it makes it more interesting i mean i could have turned this into like a bedroom i guess but you know that's been done so many times i just wanted to do something a little bit different so it's i made it into his workshop area and i did gate it off so you know you could lock it so nobody could come in here um, yeah, so we've got the alchemy station over here and the cauldron again, like full of blood, because as I say, as a vampire, you do need to have your feed every now and again. Um, and then you've got a cage here, and as you can see, I've got my torture wheel there, uh, that is enchanted, as you can see, to continuously turn around and around. And on the floor, you can see the debris of all the remains of, you know, various victims over the, you know, the time that he's had this house that are all kind of strewn all over the floor skeletons and all kinds of things like that so yeah that's that's kind of what i decided to do with this area i think it makes it a little bit more sort of interesting um and yeah it's it's um it fits with uh, the character and kind of like um i guess who he is as a character um being a vampire and a mage and all of those things uh, so if we close this gate, um, if I can get hold of it, because I've had to turn the UI off, there we go. Um, and then I decided to make this into a lighting feature. Now this is a, a, um, a huge hanging uh, gibbet, and I, it is a huge object, and you need a high ceiling space in order to be able to put it somewhere. And so I decided to put it there and to turn it into a light feature, which is what I've done. And I think it looks kind of cool. It's more interesting than, you know, your traditional um, chandelier. Um, so, yeah, we've got that lighting feature down there. And then there's one of these cool creatures in uh, these display cases that I mentioned before, which I think are really cool to have on display. So, yeah, that is basically this house those two floors uh that's basically all you get and it's, it is turning into night now as i come outside so we'll be able to have um, a little bit of look um, around if i actually i can advance time to make it into night time uh not quite there yet there we go okay so uh, you can see at night time um i didn't go overboard with the lighting because i do want it to sort of look I don't want it to be in your face. I just wanted to sort of highlight key features of the, the garden. So, yeah, you, the, you can see that the lighting sort of lights up the statues quite nicely. And um, like I said, there is lighting around the, the fountain, which is kind of nice as well. So um, I also put this alid crystal as well, which acts as a lighting feature um, for this part of the garden as well, which uh, does actually give off quite a bit of light. Um, so it is kind of nice. And if we go around the back... Um, you can see at night time the stable looks kind of cool at night time because the moon vines kind of glow um, and it adds a little bit sort of more detail to the stable at night which it, um, rather than putting torches everywhere again I wanted to make it look a little bit different so that's it that is Domus Frasticus here in Craglawn uh, so if you're interested in picking this one up it isn't that expensive to pick up I think it's uh, classed as a classic home um, so you can quite easily get this, um, you know, it's not out of reach in terms of the amount of gold you need in order to buy it, but I highly recommend it. Um, obviously you can do anything you want with it. This is what I chose to do with it. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed that guided tour and I've got some more houses that I'm working on and I will upload them as and when I finish them. So if you want to see some more, then please um, subscribe to the channel and uh, you can watch them whenever they're uploaded. But anyway, thank you for watching.